First, I will just create a floor plan that of the building or the tower that I want to build on this building that I already have here. To do so, I have just created the face and Modeler already selected it for me. And then I click on the Create Building button. Now, Modeler created a building based on some predefined parameters, which I can always change. And since Modeler is completely integrated with SketchUp, you can use its built-in tools like Scale tool to, to scale it up. And as you release it, you will see that number of stories adapt. Another way of changing such buildings is to go into the user interface, switch to the building tab, and specify it by the number. So let's go with a stories. And as you can see here, there are quite a few parameters that you can set for each specific building. This, in terms of SketchUp, these are not the components like what Avis has been showing you, but they are actually SketchUp groups. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a complex building or mixed use building. To do so, I will just select a few of the simple buildings, one sitting on top of the another, and click on the third button here, which is create complex building. Now, what this will do is it will merge those groups into a single group. So in terms of SketchUp, this is just a simple group of groups, which I can still enter and modify on a, on a simple building level. So I can change this part maybe to be just three stories high, but they, maybe I also want to change that each story is four stories, uh, four meters high. Of course, if needed, you can go and change units from meters to feet. Now, this is just the basic modeling. There, there are some other tools that you can use, like the split tool to quickly split the buildings and so on. But since we don't have too much time, I will skip those. What we are interesting, interested in now is the data that comes out of our model. For this, I will head over to survey. And I have a few options here. I can show the data for selected building. And all the data then that I'm selecting here is actually visible directly in my inside my 3D model. And then whenever I click a building, I see the numbers related to this building. I have an option for basic, which shows me just some basic information about the building, or full. And as you can see, whenever I change the building, all the data is also being updated. So if I go here, you can see all the numbers are updated on the fly. So I have the option to show the data for the selected building. I have also the option to show the, the, a bit different data for city blocks, because in this case, we have two city blocks. It's a small infield development, but there are some other numbers that are being calculated out of it, such as floor area ratio and site coverage. Of course, you can also go to the full to see also what is the parking space deficit and so on. And then you also have the option to, to see the data for the plot area. Plot area is my complete model. So whatever I have in my model is displayed here, summed up in this one. So in this case, I want to show also, or I want to check because uh, what the garage size would need to be to provide enough parking spaces, because I see that at the moment I'm lacking 707 parking spaces. To do so, I will just quickly select this building and change its use from residential to parking. As you can see, I'm instantly getting closer to zero, but it's not enough because what we are doing now we, is that this building is instead of requiring new parking spaces, it provides them. So this way we can quickly sketch the building and see what is roughly the size of the building that we would need to build to have enough parking spaces for this complete development. Of course, we can also grab it and put it underground and further modify it there. Let me just put it back here. Now, when it comes to data, this is not all. We have another options, set of options. So you can go and export urban design control values as a CSV, and this will get you the data that Aris has been showing you, which you can instantly use in, in uh, layout. But there are also other things like open urban control data table, which will show you your complete set of data integrated in a table that, that is part of SketchUp or Modeler. And as you can see here, when I click a building, it gets marked in, in my window. So this way I can quite easily either select something here and it gets selected in, in, in SketchUp, or I can select something in SketchUp and it gets selected here. It's also sortable 
and so on. So it's it's another way of getting to the data, but the one that we've just added lately, and I believe it's the most interesting, is is the live connection to Excel. So this one can be engaged through extensions, modeler, send modeler data to Excel. What this will do is it will open up Excel, to which each time you you make any design move in your model, the data is pushed to it. Uh, the data is pushed to the modeler live data tab and whenever I do any change to my model the data here is being refreshed and now in this example tab that I have here I have some linked cells as you can see and I could do my my own calculations to to get the data that is not provided by default in modeler and have it updated in real time so let's go here and maybe check this building and change its land use from a residential to residential tower as you can see this is being updated on the fly here in my model and if i had any other formulas being connected to it i would have it uh recalculate have them recalculated as i'm changing my design now heading over to uh, interactive 3d zoning this is a completely it's a new technology or unique technology that you can only find with modelers for SketchUp. There is no other application we are aware of that has something like this. And what it does is it takes the basic rules of the zoning ordinance and embeds them into SketchUp in a way that modeler can read them and uh, act accordingly. So let me demonstrate by example. When I select this building and move it from one city block to another, you can see that it's adapting the height and the use of the building. And one another thing that you can notice here is that city block is becoming red. If I go to the city block, I can see that permitted FAR is 2.5. And if I go to the city block survey, I will see that for this city block, my floor area ratio is 2.55. So I'm exceeding it and we are not getting building permit for this. So we need to make it a bit smaller. But now it's a bit hard to get it exactly to the to the to the right side so what i will do in this case is i will go to building and i will actually enter the proper value manually since i know i've done i've done it thousand times now i know this is the number and this is what gets me to the maximum potential of this side if i make it any larger let's say for one meter only it becomes red although there is no visible difference but one is inside the limits and another one isn't now i'm maybe not completely uh I, I don't maybe completely like this shape and position of the building i can always move it around but i want to stretch it maybe a bit in this direction while keeping it in inside the the limitation so what i will do is i will click here to keep built area when scaling buildings manually and then when i scale it in one direction modeler will make sure that it scales it in another so that we are keeping our FAR and site coverage. This gives me a quick way of modifying the buildings to, to stay compliant with the rules and at the same time focus on the design that I'm working on. This way we can quickly create a few design alternatives. In this case, I will just go here, explode and click on create buildings. And as you can see, uh, the buildings are now all created according to the heights defined and land uses. Of course, you can always go and change the height and go outside of the rules, but in this case, you will need to explain to the municipality why it is that you want to do something different. There is a lot of flexibility here that you have to, to change your model and adapt it according to your client's needs. So let me just go here to uh, ending model of this one, because in here, what I want to show you is we have actually created two design alternatives of this model and we have it available here under scenes i have just created uh, them via view animation at scene this way we can quickly add different design alternatives as you can see and if i go here and switch over to plot area full you will see that also the data is being updated so this one yields far 2.38 while this one is at 2.45. So we can quickly and easily compare different design alternatives, not just in terms of the design, but also in terms of numbers. And one important thing here is that if you hide your buildings, 
everything becomes zeroed out, meaning that it's not part of calculation, which means that modeler calculates only what you see in your model. If you hide it, it will not be part of the calculation. Now, going forward, I want to show you also the capability that we have added just in the latest release of Modeler, and it is import of OpenStreetMap buildings. Let me go and hide this one. In this case, I will use the uh, location of downtown Manhattan, the way that Alice has already shown you, via file geolocation, add location. We have geolocated our model, and then with a click of a button, I will go to download OpenStreetMap 3D buildings, and here down you will see something is going on and then it will start importing buildings now these open street map buildings they are community provided so sometimes they might not be completely reliable in in case of new york the model is really good but when it comes to smaller towns it might be it might not be as accurate as we need it to be in this case we can import gis files if we have them available and one thing about the open street maps is that it, it contains about 350 million building, buildings globally meaning that it covers more or less all of the major cities around the globe so let me go here and open up the gis location when it comes to importing gis data there are two prerequisites you have you need to have your model geolocated and then uh, the data that you are importing needs to be in WGS. So we have geolocated mod model already here. I will just hit import GIS data, which will open up a new window where I can set my shape file or GeoJSON. We support those two files. And in this case, I am importing buildings. I will just quickly hit import GIS layer because what's happening now is Modeler is importing about 1,100 buildings, and they are actually being imported as proper modeler parametric buildings. So they contain all the information and capabilities to, to modify them. Uh, what we have here is also the mapping, because we need to let modeler know what GIS attributes mean to uh, modeler parameters, how, how they translate from attributes to parameters. So I will also go ahead and import city blocks go ahead and click import gis layer you can see here that i have selected uh, city blocks and all this mapping that i have done so on the left hand side here we see the attributes of the shape file in this case we are mapping the land use we are mapping permitted building uh, permitted floor area ratio and permitted site coverage uh, and then as you can see some of those are becoming red meaning that there there again is some conflict with rules of the city blocks uh, or, or the zoning ordinance and the buildings that are actually existing already there. So this is one use case where cities could use uh, SketchUp and Modeler to verify their GIS data. Now, the last thing that I want to show in this one before I hand it back over to Aris, um, I will just hide this one. There are other things that you can import, uh, such as trees. And the, the trees are actually really quick because they are uh, SketchUp components and Modeler comes with a library of those. So you can map those. And by hitting import GIS layer, we are also getting the trees, which adds a lot of visual quality to our model. And as you can see here, the buildings are still live Modeler buildings. So let me go here. And all of the data that I have is now just on a bigger scale of 1,100 buildings and, I don't know, maybe 100 city blocks.